Welcome to A Human Perspective. Hi, I'm Lola and I'm a recovering workaholic. I worked any free moment I got in bed before work, on my way to work, during breaks, lunch times, during dinners, in lovely restaurants, after dinner, in the evenings, just before bed, after bedtime, and worst of all, while spending time with loved ones, and even while abroad on holiday. I would actually wake up extra early to work enough to still be present while away. Now, people become workaholics for a range of reasons. To climb the career ladder, because they feel this is what being a good employee is, trying to learn as much as possible, or trying to achieve as much as possible. For me, work became a wonderful world to escape in. There were some personal events happening in my life that I felt I had no control of. So I turned to work where I felt I could take control and get the outcomes I wanted. Work was a place I could tackle the problem and win. And I really enjoyed the challenge, hard slog, and the wins. They helped me see I could achieve anything I put my mind to, and gave me a sense of validation. I can do things. Initially, this wasn't a bad thing. It worked. I had balance. I was happy. However, this later started to get out of hand. I worked so hard like a dog digging a hole, looking for some constantly out of reach bone. Then one day I stopped, looked up and realized I was stuck, still in the same place, but now working from a different perspective, somewhere beneath everyone else at the bottom of the abyss of a hole I had been digging. Where I thought the work I was doing would naturally elevate me, It had actually driven me down to deep depths of servitude and resentment. I was unhappy, on my knees, expecting validity, praise, a promotion, and I experienced the opposite. My lowest moment was during my first trip to NYC with a dear friend. I had more than earned this break, and all I could think about was work, and a major project that would need to be rolled out as soon as I got back, but I would have to prep while away in order to stay on track. I woke up in the twilight hours of the very early mornings to work. I sat on the hard bathroom floor so my typing and laptop light wouldn't disturb and work this way for hours. Once I was done, I would crawl into bed and though I felt so good about the work I had done, I also felt ashamed of myself. I knew this behavior was unacceptable, but I consoled myself with the thought that I would be rewarded for their effort. This was far from the case. I came back and rolled out this company-wide initiative on my own under a lot of pressure within tight deadlines, and I was stressed. The project went off without a hitch, but as I received no support or even a thank you from a key stakeholder... I became resentful, and the truth is, I had no one to blame but myself. I say I'm recovering because I still have my moments where I have to make a conscious effort to pull back. Diving and getting lost in work is my gym. It's how I work out and release endorphins. It is the best drug because unlike drowning in alcohol, you also get to be productive and useful. And at the end, you successfully complete the game level. I genuinely enjoy working and winning, but I do have to admit it is an addiction. Though my life is much more balanced now, I struggle with feelings of inadequacy. I never feel like I'm doing enough. I worry I'm seen as lazy or incapable. I always feel I should push harder, do more. But I know it's just my little work demon trying to push me off the wagon. I have found a way to quieten her down so I can focus on other parts of my life that truly matter to me. I'm still finding my balance, but I'm heading in the right direction. 
I wanted to touch on this topic because you probably have a workaholic in your team that needs saving. You need to let them know when they are doing good work and that you don't expect them to work in their free time. I know this may be obvious to you, but some people need to hear this and to be reminded of this regularly. Let them know it's okay to not work while on holiday. Let them know it's okay to not answer an email immediately, to not be on top of everything, to prioritize, to push back, to let people know when their load is already full and when they need help. Though this person may appear to be productive initially, working in this way is simply not sustainable. Something will give and this rarely leads to a positive outcome. Maybe you are the workaholic. I'd like to tell you, you are fucking awesome. Anything and everything you do is good enough. Something may happen and this job you have that you value so much, the job that makes you feel so good or bad about yourself may disappear tomorrow. What happens then? When you turn around and have to face yourself and your life, What do you hope to see? Have you invested enough of your time for what you hope to see to be what you will actually see? Don't wait for you or your world to crumble. You can turn things around today. Put in place some hard line boundaries, both in terms of your work and the people that you work with. Manage your time better during the work day so you make the most of your work day and have a cutoff point. Keep your work apps off your personal phone so you're not tempted to tweak or check something. Aim to wrap up work a little early. The amount of time you spend working does not directly correlate to productivity. So work smarter, not harder. You already spend the majority of your life working. You can spare those moments you're not paid to be working with those you love and on your personal passions. Prioritize yourself. Who are you outside of work? Is your work identity bigger than your personal identity? Don't let work precede life. I wish you all the best. Thanks for listening.